think I can go bigger. There we go. So this one says, determine the principal that must be invested at rate R compounded monthly. So that, a hundred, oh gosh, what is that? 1,300,000 will be available for retirement in T years. We don't know how many years. But they did give us underneath that the percentage and they gave us the years. So it's actually in 10 years, right? Somebody wants to be able to retire in 10 years and needs to know how much money they need to put into this account, right? Um, the biggest thing here is that this one does not say compounded continuously, does it? It says monthly. And when it says monthly, that means a whole nother formula than that P-E-R-T. The P-E-R-T is just strictly for continuous. Okay. So if we're going to be doing the monthly thing, then that means you're compounding a certain number of times. So it's this formula here that we have to use when it's compounded monthly. And because it's compounded monthly, this N is going to be the number of times that that happens in a year. And there's 12 months in a year, so our N is going to be 12. We know that the amount after needs to be that 1,300,000, right? We know that the rate in decimal form is going to be 0 0.05. And then of course we know that the T is 10. So it's literally just a matter of plugging in all those numbers where they belong. So A here, this is just the number one. So you're not plugging in anything there. You've got your rate, your N, your N again, and then your T. Now all of this part is numbered. So I did type all of that in the calculator and I got this decimal number, okay? And if I'm taking P times this decimal number, the only way to solve for P is to divide by that decimal number, right? And so I put the dot, 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 because in the calculator, I left that as its ongoing self, okay? And so in the calculator, I just typed in the 1,300,000, the division symbol, and then I think I did second answer so that I didn't round this number. It just kept that ongoing decimal, okay? And then it gave me this answer. The less rounding you do, the more accurate your answer will be, okay? And so this one actually matched option E, okay? So that one wasn't too, too bad. The other one, this one was on the test. And so I definitely wanna talk about that one. I know you guys probably saw the solutions that I messaged, but um, we definitely wanna talk about it. So this one has the table and it gives us what kind of isotope it is really isn't a big deal, right? That's not information that we use in our problem, um, but we are gonna use that half-life information and then we are gonna use that um, last box of information. So we actually need to do both parts in order to give them what they're wanting, which is the initial quantity, okay? If you do one of the parts, you should be able to figure out one of the numbers but then you will have to go in and do the other part in order to figure out the final answer, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and see what that's going to look like. The first thing I wanted to mention is what the half-life meant. So when your half-life is 50, whatever this is, uh, 5,715, what that means is that your amount afterward is gonna be half of what you started with when the T is that number of years, okay? So if this is the formula for exponential growth or decay, I'm basically going to turn this amount afterward into half of what was originally there, right? And then I don't know what was originally there, so that's why I kept those um, symbols still the same, okay? I don't know what the R is, but I know that this exists when the year is 5715, right? This happens when you have that time. Okay, once I knew that, I can still divide by the uh, Y sub zero, or Y not is what they call it, um, K-N-O-T. <laughs> so Y K-N-O-T is this guy. I do need to get this exponential by itself, so I am going to divide by that um, coefficient. And it just happens to cancel from both, right? So I just have the one half all by itself, and then I have that exponential expression. Once the exponential expression is by itself, then you can convert the form over, right? So it would be log with this same base. And then instead of this exponent over here with the E, it would be this number with the E. 
So log base E and then the 0.5, and then that has no choice but to go to the other side, right? So we're just converting that form. Then from there, I can actually solve for R. And I think I also changed the log base E to the LN notation, okay? So we have LN of 0.5. And if I solve for R, divide by that big number, I do it on both sides. I typed all of this in the calculator and I got this decimal. On this side, they just cancel, right? So that helped me to figure out R, which is great and all, but that still doesn't help me find out the initial amount, right? And the initial amount is this Y naught that we canceled when we did the first batch of info, okay? So I'm gonna go back to this formula, but I'm gonna now use the R that I found, and I'm gonna use the data in that second box that was all the way to the right, okay? So on that second box, it told me that the Y was two when T was a thousand. So I plugged in two for the Y. I still don't know what the Y naught is. I plugged in the E and the R value we just found, and then this, ten, this uh, thousand for T. This is all one number. It's a bunch of numbers, right? So I did type all of that in the calculator and got this decimal. And then in order for me to solve for the initial quantity, I just divided both sides by that decimal and I ended up with this value here, okay? So it was a pretty lengthy process because you had two parts just to get that one answer, right? I would definitely put this one on my note sheet for sure. <laughs> put the little chart so you can like recognize it when you see it on, if you see it on the final, right? Because this one's a pretty long one. Okay, let's see what number 49 looks like. This one was also on the test, um, but I had some people trying to not cheat as in cheat, like you're cheating on the test, but <laughs> cheat as in try to like shortcut through the problem because all of these had the same K value. Some people just used that K value and then the information they gave them and then try to do it that way. Um, and so then they were able to select the correct answer, but you got points deducted because you never actually showed me how you found the K. You just used the K that was there for all the problems, okay? So we're gonna go through it the whole way on how to find that K and then how to use it to get the final answer, okay? So let me go over to my other page. So this one does give me the formula. It tells me that it's modeled by y equals 4,080 e to the kt. It tells me t represents the number of months that the website has been operating. And then it tells me that in the third month, there were 10,000 hits on this website, okay? And so it says first find k and then use the k value to predict the number of hits the website will receive after 22 months. So we need to use the first bit of data to figure out what that K is, okay? So we know that in third month, it's 10,000 hits, okay? Which means that the T is three months and the Y is the 10,000, right? So I'm gonna go over to my paper. So it tells me the third month means T is gonna equal three and we know that the Y is going to be uh, 10,000. So I took their formula that they had and I plugged in the T value and I plugged in the Y value. And then to solve for this, I have to get this exponential by itself. So I had to get rid of the coefficient, right? So I divided by the 480 on both sides to get rid of that coefficient. And then I later just pop this out, okay? What I need to do though now is now that the exponential parts by itself, I need to switch those forms over, right? So we put it into its log form. And then remember log E is just the LN, right? And then if I wanna solve for K, I just need to divide by three. So when I typed this fraction in my calculator, I ended up with that decimal, which is the decimal you see on all the choices, right? But at least now you know how to get to that value, okay? Then it says to use this value to figure out what's going on at 22 months, right? So now I'm going back to my equation and I'm using that rate that we just found and then I'm plugging in the 22 months, okay? And so this one's just a matter of plugging this whole thing in the calculator 
so that you could figure out what the y value will be. And so if I round that, I ended up with this value, which actually matched option B. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, now we're getting into some of the stuff we just did on our test. So finally, the last like four problems are um, the stuff from this last unit y'all just tested on. Okay. All the systems of equations and matrices and the good stuff, right? So for 50, it says solve the system um, by the method of substitution and then check your answers graphically. So it does give you the graph. So you kind of know what the answer should be, right? It should be somewhere around two and three, and then maybe something around negative 16. We should also get something like zero. What is that? Eight. So that's got to be a four. So maybe something around a three, a zero and a three. And then over here, that's something around between negative two and negative three. And maybe if that goes by four, maybe like 20 something, right? But you can kind of see like what are plausible solutions, okay? Um, you could type these in a calculator and figure out if they're numbers that are close to these values, right? That's an option, but I'm gonna do it the old school way and actually solve it, okay? So here's our system. This was what they gave us. And I think this problem, maybe either, no, I think it's almost like the one that you had on the test. It might be a tiny bit different um, if it's not exactly the same. But what I did was I took this top equation because this one is far less complicated than the bottom equation, right? So I took the more easier looking one and then I solved for y because y was the only guy that didn't have a coefficient, okay? You can choose whichever one you want. I just thought that one would be simpler, okay? So I solved for y by minusing the 7x on both sides. And so then I got y equal to 3 minus 7x. And then the method's called substitution, right? So I had to substitute that somewhere. I can't use where it came from, right? I have to substitute it into the other equation. So this y right here is going to get replaced by the expression that is equivalent to y. So I end up with x cubed minus 3 plus this expression, 3 minus 7x. And because it's a plus sign, it's really not going to change anything, right? So I just combined these two like terms, and they canceled each other away. And then this isn't just a negative 7x. So I ended up with x cubed minus 7x. Factored out the common x, and then set each factor equal to 0. This one's already solved, so we're good. But here I had to add the seven over and then I had to take the square root. And when you take that square root, you do get the plus or minus, right? But since there's no actual square root of seven, it just stays looking like that, like a square root of seven, okay? So then now I have these three answers. I have zero, square root of seven, and negative square root of seven. And I need to find the corresponding y's that go with them, right? So I'm gonna use this expression when I plug in all of these values, okay? So I'm plugging in y equals three minus seven times zero, which just gives me the y value three. So my point is zero for x, three for y. Same goes for when I plug in this one. I'm just plugging in that square root of seven right there, which means my answer is gonna be three minus seven square root of seven. So there's my y value, there's my x value. Then finally, the last one, the only thing with this one is when you plug in the negative, this negative and that negative will turn it to positive, right? And so you have that negative square root of seven X value and then this expression for your Y value, okay? Make sure you look at your choices very, very carefully because they all look alike, okay? I'll show you them. They look all alike. They're very, very close to each other. So make sure you're really, really paying attention. It looks like they have the negative square root of seven in the front. And so our negative seven, square root of seven had three plus seven square root of seven. So that means it's not going to be A and it's not going to be C. Then I noticed that B has a negative three instead of a positive three, right? So it can't be B either. So we're down to these two. And then for positive square root of seven, we got three minus seven square root of seven. So that gives us with option E, okay? Just be very careful. Don't be too quick to like choose one, okay? Take your time, you have lots and lots of time. Okay, this one, um, I just wrote down the answer because there's really not much to write, right? I mean, you just look at it and you know what the augmented matrix looks like. 
It's literally just putting the X coefficients in one column, the Y coefficients in the second column, the Z coefficients in the third column. You have all those little dotted lines for the equals and then your constants, right? And so for the X's, we have eight and 16. That's pretty much all of them, right? For Y though, it would be negative four and what? And zero. So that already outrules A and B. Um, and I'm just down to D and E as options. And then here, what would be the, the coefficients? One and negative nine. And so then that automatically wipes out D, doesn't it? So you have no other option but D. That's correct. Okay. Good. Not too bad on that one. That one is a nice one. And then 52 is just about row operations. So they tell you what to do, but they don't tell you where to put it, right? You've got to remember where it's going to go. They tell you they want to do negative three times R1 plus R2. But who's the person, which row is the row that has to get replaced with that result? It has to be R2. It's always the one that's not multiplied by anything, okay? It's just the one you're adding to it, okay? So you have to remember that you're going to replace the R2. Now I did do that one over here on the side on the paper. So that was the matrix that they gave us. They asked us to do this, but we have to know that this means you're gonna get a new R2, okay? So I did the computation that they said. I took all three of these guys in row one and multiplied them all by a negative three. I grabbed R2, put it underneath, and I added these things together, right? So this became zero, this became negative 10, and then this became negative 17. But this has to go in for row two. It has to. And so notice that all of those results went right there in the middle. And row one stayed the same and row four stayed the same. I'm sorry, <laughs> jumping. <laughs> row one stayed the same and row three stayed the same. Okay. And then again, make sure you be very careful when you're looking at all those answers, right? Because the answer does match B. But they all look a lot alike. There's just like very little differences. See, <laughs> so they're very close to each other. Make sure you're picking the correct one. Um, the next one is a multiplication one. So you will have multiplication. And these, sometimes it says if possible at the very beginning, right? Because sometimes it's not possible. We have to like compare those, um, the dimensions or the order in order to know whether or not it's possible. Okay, so I did that first, and then if it's possible, we went ahead and did the multiplication. So this one is um, three rows and then three columns, right? So three rows and three columns. This one has three rows, but it only has two columns, right? So that one's a three by two. Now these had to match in order for it to be possible. And since both the three and the three do match, it is going to be possible for me to multiply these. And if I want to know what the answer is going to look like, you just take the ends and that tells you what the result's going to look like. Okay. So I knew when I was writing out this box that I was going to have three rows and then I was only going to have two columns. Okay. And then it's that whole game of like, I use my fingers, but <laughs> taking this row times this column to get the first guy and then the same row times the second column to get that guy. Right. And then the middle times the first to get this guy middle times the second to get this guy, the last times the first row, <laughs> last row times the first column to get this stuff, and then the last row times the last column to get this stuff, okay? And so if you follow that pattern, slow it down when you watch the recording, right? <laughs> but if you follow that pattern, you'll see where all these numbers come from, okay? And then I just put them all in my calculator. I put that whole string of mess in the calculator and got each of these individual values, okay? Um, I like to do it that way. Some people just use the calculator all together. It's up to you how you do it because you're on the final now, right? So you choose how to do it. There's also a way to do it in your calculator. I didn't tell you because I couldn't, <laughs> but there is just if you want to know because you are engineers and you are going to be taking classes that are going to make you do matrices. So I think it's kind of important to know how to use the matrices in this calculator, okay? This is going to be the same calculator you're going to use throughout the rest of your classes in Phillips, okay? All of your classes are gonna require this calculator. So 
If you notice, right underneath the mode button, it says matrix, doesn't it? Right? If I hit second and then I hit that button, it gives me these options, okay? Um, this is just names. So if I wanted to bring up matrix A, I would just hit enter and it would throw in on my calculator matrix A. I'm gonna clear that though. If I wanted to bring up matrix B or C, I would move down to those and then hit enter. Oops, I don't know what I pushed. I'd move down to the one I want, hit enter, and then it'd place it in my screen, okay? But this is what you can do with your matrices. So you can take a determinant which y'all have to do, right? You can do transpose. Y'all don't know nothing about that yet. That's not in this class, okay? You can even find the inverse of something. You can even do the row re reduction in here. And this is the row, I forgot what it's called. The RREF is the one where it goes all the way down to the end, the gauss jardin elimination, the one that gets all the ones and all the zeros. That's this one. Okay, so it does it all for you. Now, how do I make those matrices be the ones that they gave me, right? You can go to edit. If I go to edit, I mess around with this and change it. I can mess around with this one and change it. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and edit A. How many rows does it have? It has three rows, so I'm gonna highlight that. And then it has three columns. So I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's just a matter of putting all these entries in here. So I did zero, enter, three, enter, zero, four, zero, three, four, six, and negative three. Okay, now I'm gonna quit because I don't wanna in do anything else to it, okay? If I go back to the matrix thing, notice that it has the new one now, right? And now I wanna to go to B so I can put that one in there. Oops, I called it instead of editing it. I gotta go over to edit <laughs> and then hit B. And this one has three rows, but it only has two columns, right? So I'm gonna start entering this. Um, eight, two, negative two. So this can take some time too. Sometimes it is faster just to do it on paper and quit after you finish entering everything, okay? But once I have that, all I can go is second matrix, call up A, put the time symbol, second matrix, go and call up B. And that's what I'm trying to do, isn't it? And if I hit enter, it tells me the answer. Okay, and is it the same thing that we got? It is, right? So it does do it for you. If you had to find an inverse, if I go to matrix, let, you can only do inverses of square matrices, right? So a two by two or a three by three. So I could do an inverse of this one. I cannot do an inverse of that one. But I want to show you how to do it, okay? If I go to that button, I'm going to click it and I'm going to call it on my calculator. Then I'm going to go to matrix again and I'm going to go to math and I'm going to hit inverse. And notice it puts that little inverse symbol, right? And then when I hit enter, it actually figures out the inverse for me. I can even go that little double arrow, right? We know that that converts it to fractions. I can even hit that and it'll change them all to fractions because the decimals look crazy, right? <laughs> so I changed them all into fractions and it gives you that as well. Okay, nice, right? But I wasn't going to tell you that on this test. <laughs> you can know now. <laughs> um, and then the last is the row reduction. So let's say I was solving, not a row reduction, a determinant. That's what I wanted to do. Second, quit. So if I wanted to do a determinant, and the reason why I want to do that is because in the next problem, you have to do a bunch of determinants, okay? Um, you can go to the matrix math. You can click on one of those, and then you can do second matrix again and go to the math and then hit determinant. Oh, I did it backwards. See how it's telling me to, tell to take the determinant of? So I did it backwards. So go to matrix first, math, determinant, and then you can put in that uh, matrix. And then it tells you what the determinant is, okay? So it's nice and handy. It does take a little while to enter those things in there, but it is possible to do. And it's nice if you're trying to check your answers, right? Okay, so this one, I'm not gonna use a calculator just cause it's only two by twos. So it's not difficult to figure out, right? 
Number 55, I might go use the calculator, okay? But for Kramer's rule, for a two by two, it's super easy to do determinants. But to do Kramer's rule on this one, which is like the one you had on the test, right? That one's a little bit harder, okay? So I might use the calculator just to practice with it, okay? Um, but for this one, we can do that one by hand. So for 54, this was the problem. And Kramer's rule means I need to do all of those different determinants, right? So the first one is just the coefficients the way they are. So negative 7, 3, 11, and negative 9. And then you do your cross multiplication thing, right? So when you go downward, it's always positive. And when you go upward, it's always the opposite, right? So that's positive 33, but it's opposite, which is minus. And I get this value. Same thing here. This is negative 180. This is 0, but I have to minus it still negative 180. Here I get zero, here I get 60, but on this direction, I have to use the opposite, right? And so we get negative 60. And then this is the actual Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule says you take the dx over the d, over the d and then dy over the d. And I didn't even talk about that. Like, where did these numbers come from, right? What does this mean you have to do? Replace that row. Right, you replace this um, column <laughs> with the constants, okay? So instead of these x uh, column, you're gonna actually replace it with your constant. So those became 20 and zero and the 11 and negative nine stayed. Then when you're doing dy, you're gonna replace the y column with those constants, right? So the x's stayed the same as the original, but now the y's changed to 20 and zero, okay? And so we're going to do something similar for the next problem. It's got the same directions. It says to do Kramer's rule. So we're going to do that. And although I did it by hand, I am going to also show you how to do it in the calculator. Okay. Just so you can have both ways. Okay. So if we are doing this one by hand for the D, you're just taking the coefficients just the way they are. Right. So all of these numbers, five, negative four, one, negative one, two, negative two, three, one, and one. And then I followed the old method, right, that we used for determinants. And so I figured all this out and I got 33. I'm gonna show you now how to do that in the calculator. So we're gonna go matrix. This is a three by three. So I'm gonna stick with matrix A and just edit matrix A. So it is a three by three. And I'm gonna put in these values. Okay, and then I gotta quit. As soon as you finish editing something, always quit, okay? Now I wanna do the determinant of that. So I'm gonna go to the matrix menu. I'm gonna go to the math and then I'm just gonna select determinant. Then I gotta go to the matrix menu again and call up this. So under names, you can just select that and it will put it in your screen. So I'm just gonna hit enter and I've got that. And it tells me it's 33, which is what we got, right? Now for the DX, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna use a three by three matrix, oops, clear. But I'm gonna edit this three by three matrix. It's still a three by three, but I only need to edit that first column, right? So I'm gonna change that five to a negative 12. I'm gonna go down and over. I'm gonna change this one to a 12, hit enter, go down and over, and then change this one to a negative Oops, negative two, and hit enter. And then since it's already, the other two columns are good to go, I'm gonna quit. And then I'm gonna do the whole thing all over again. And actually, didn't I already do determinant of A in my calculator? So I'm just gonna go highlight that and copy it and hit enter. And I got zero, the same thing, okay? Now we're gonna edit this one, but we're gonna have to edit two rows because I changed this one, didn't I? And now I have to change that one. So I'm gonna go to matrix again. I'm gonna go to, oops, edit, select that three by three. Just hit okay for all those dimensions. And I gotta change two of the columns now. So that one changes to five. This one changes to negative 12. That one changes to negative one and positive 12. And then this negative or positive three and negative two. And I can quit. I can go back up to that statement I had before and then just hit enter and I get 66, 
Okay, so it's a lot faster, right, than doing it all of this way. It is good to know how to do it by hand because when you do get to um, some of those engineering classes, they throw letters in here. And you can't do it in a calculator if it has letters, okay? And so you have to know how to do this by hand. So I taught it to you, right? I mean, that's it. <laughs> but you can use the calculator if there are just numbers, okay? But if they do throw in X's and lambdas, lambda, that's gonna be the one you use. It looks like this, it's paper, it looks like that. Um, that's the guy that's gonna be in there. Um, but when they throw that variable in there, you do have to go back to your old school method, okay? Okay, um, and I think that was it, because then all I had to do was apply the Kramer's rule, right? So we did the dx over the d value, the dy over the d value, and then the dz over the z value. I didn't do this one. Do you need me to do that one? <laughs> you got the idea, right, how to put it in the calculator? And we also know how to do it old school way by hand, okay? Um, but then the result, after you reduce all of those, and that one matches option A.